So today I'm going to demonstrate to you the OpenFax um, lash-up. This is the results of the first six months of the Open Pharmacological Space project. And um, this is all using existing technology, which you see today, and existing data sources. So the goal here is to perform different kinds of pharmacology queries um, to do with chemistry and um, biology. So one of the important queries within the within the project that was identified is the ability to search by enzyme family. So let's take a look at that. So the key here, the key question that was being asked by the scientists was in, was in the project is to find um, all oxyreductase inhibitors uh, that are active in human and mice under um, within IC50 value or an activity value less than um, 100 nanomolars. So in this uh, pane, one can browse uh, these enzyme families to various um, different levels of uh, specificity. Um, here we're going to select the entire class of enzymes called oxyreductases. So we'll just go ahead and use that selection. We're going to exclude all um, activity above 100 nanomolars, in this case 0.001 millimolars in our interface, and we're going to select human and mice. So we go ahead and start starting the search. What's important here is that we're going over multiple um, databases. So we've taken information from Brenda and as well as the enzyme database from Uniprop. And you can see this is um, just a regular spreadsheet that you can interact with as normal. So let's take another example. Um, let's imagine a, um, a, uh, a pharmacist or a pharmacological researcher is interested in um, information about the drug sorafenib, the compound used in the drug sorafenib. Sorafenib is a drug used in to treat liver cancer. So let's go ahead and type that in. And you can see it's bringing up selections. So I go ahead and I select this compound called sorafenib. So we're using here the um, uh, sales or drug name and not the specific chemical or compound name. So we go ahead and, and go searching. And here what we've done is we found uh, various information about this compound. So we have the compound synonym here, sorafenib, but we now know the compound name is Bay 439006. And we display information from a variety of places. Um, here we're looking at ChemSpider, and obviously you can see the structure here. And we can hide and uh, uh, get rid of some of these compounds. So let's get rid of the smiles or the CSID. And you can go ahead and look at the structure. Obviously link out to the source of information here, ChemSpider, so we can go ahead and go look at this chemical structure on ChemSpider. Now, um, and ChemSpider has more information. So let's go ahead and copy the smile string. So now that you have um, that compound information, you may want to search for the particular compound by its structure. Um, obviously we could go ahead and draw this structure uh, like normal, but that's going to take quite a while. So we'll just go ahead and paste in um, that smiles code. So we can do substructure search and structural similarity search, but in interest of time, we're just going to do an exact structure search. So we go ahead and do a start struct start the search, and so we've searched for that structure. And again, we get quite a lot of information coming back. Importantly, uh, we get this receptor name over here. So we can go ahead and, um, and so this is our target, right? So we've gone from a particular compound to a particular target. And now we'd like more information about that target. So we can go here and we can look for target by name. Um, so let's go ahead and, oops, put in this target that we've copied and pasted, and we go ahead and search for that target. So what's interesting here is that we've brought back information not only about the target and its um, genes, 
but also that it is in some interaction identified by this um, NSC code with a particular compound smiles. Interestingly, we also link out to the PubMed ID associated with, with this particular target. Here we're integrating information from the PDSP database. So let's go ahead and check out this PubMed article. So we can link out to PubMed. And we just see it as normal. Now, maybe the um, researcher would like to investigate more into this article. So let's go ahead and download the article. And we'll go ahead and just save this, um, save the PDF. So what we can do now is we can use another application that's part of the OpenFAQ's um, uh, suite of applications to investigate the, to read this PDF. So I've already gotten, I've already have um, this loaded up into uh, a viewer called Utopia. Uh, Utopia has been instrumented with a connection to the underlying OpenFAQs platform. So as you can see down here, it's got this little red dot, which means Utopia has found something within the document. And we can go down here and we can click, and Utopia will go out to the OpenFAQs platform and retrieve various information about it. So in particular, it will retrieve the chemical structure and the KI value within the database. So this means that the um, user can, while reading this paper, can also see what kind of values are within the underlying OpenFAX platform. So maybe after reading this paper, they decide that they want to actually go and get all the information about this particular target. So let's go back to our general GUI and go to pharmacology. So we can do pharmacology by, ta by target. And again, we'll search for the same target and search. And now it's bringing back all the information we have about that target. So let's go ahead and hide this, this one, this KI entry. And now we have the various um, solubility values or activity values associated with this target, the species involved, the inhibitors valves. And obviously one can go ahead and download that to Excel for use in their own application. So the final part of the lash up is to show that we focus primarily on pharmacological data here, but now we're interested in um, uh, other kinds of biological data. One kind of biological data is pathway information. So we can switch over to another application called um, PathVisio, and this is a pathway um, display. And we can also use the same underlying OpenFAQs uh, platform to um, uh, integrate and update PathVisio. So let's just, we see this pathway and we can do different things. So here we go, we can go to Pathway Loom and perhaps you want a suggestion about what kinds of um, genes are appropriate for this particular protein. So we can do Find Compound by key, Gene Suggestion. It goes out to the OpenFACTS platform. If we click over here, uh, we can see that it's produced a suggestion that we can copy and then paste into our um, pathway. Again, the important thing to note here is this is a completely different kind of biomedical application, but we're using the same underlying OpenFAX platform. Another po important point I'd like to emphasize through all these applications, uh, through the um, browsing PDFs, through the generic GUI, through the pathways, what you've not seen is any semantic web technologies. Semantic web technologies are enabling these sorts of novel, integrated views of pharmacological data.